All right, our next speaker is James Andrews, and he's been a cooperator with BMC since, since its inception. He is coordinator of the Vermont Reptile and Amphibians Atlas, an adjunct pro assistant professor teaching in the Rubenstein School at UVM, and chair of the Reptile and Amphibian Scientific Advisory Group to the Vermont Endangered Species Committee. His talk is entitled, The Vermont Reptile and Amphibian Atlas, Highlights from the 2014 Season. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I've been fortunate to have funding from uh, Vermont Monitoring Cooperative for two separate projects. One is intensive monitoring, and the intensive monitoring is using drift fences, which, which that is. And, uh, and that's a technique that we use at Mount Mansfield and occasionally at Libra Wilderness. And then extensive monitoring, which is looking statewide at the distribution of reptiles and amphibians in the state. What species do we have? Where are they? That kind of information. What diseases have shown up? And we need a lot more money and, and time on that one if you're looking for a subject to, to delve into. Um, this, this summer we had some fun. We targeted those, uh, if I take you back here, you can see some of these towns that are, uh, that are in yellow or red, which means that there, there just has not been enough citizen science information coming from those towns to tell us really to, to document the species in those towns. So, so there's a group of kind of hardcore uh, volunteers that love to get out and look for herbs during the summer. And I tap those people, and we go and visit uh, a variety of those towns. And, and we did this year. Um, St. Albans City was, you know, the city is, is, a, is, a, is a legal boundary, and so, as you would guess, we don't have a lot of information from within the boundaries of St. Albans, but we tried to see what we could find in, in St. Albans, and we added some records this summer. We went to, to Avery's Gore, Warner's Grant. Warner's Grant doesn't even have a road in it, so it's not unthinkable to not get a lot of citizen science information from a town that, one, has no people, but two doesn't <laughs> have a road. So, we hiked into Warren's Grant, trying to pick up some information. And, and you'll notice that, that what we're looking for here is, is documentation on species that are not particularly rare, but we want some good, solid photo vouchers. And, and we have reports that give us a pretty good idea of distribution of species across the state, but we want to back them up with some, a collection of good photo vouchers. And, and uh, Northeast Kingdom was a weak spot. So here's some of the volunteers. Uh, we had some fun. We had them doing some turtle trapping. Um, you're getting out there catching some snakes. This is a really large female part, close, close to the record. Here we're looking for one of the three species of, of stream salamanders, one of the dusky spring and two line salamanders in, uh, in Richford, Vermont. And, and, and what I want to point out, or one thing I'd like to point out, is that last year we developed something that we didn't have before, and that was kind of a hit list of. So you can go to our website, vermontherpatlas.org, and you can look up a species or you can look up a town and see what we need documentation for. And, and I'm hoping that this will be a motivator. It's, it's kind of a fun thing for school groups, Boy Scouts, family groups, whatever, to figure out conservation commissions. You know, what, what species do we have in town? You might have assumed, oh, painted turtles, somebody must have provided vouchers for painted turtles, but often that's not the case. Some of the most common species are just overlooked. Snapping turtle? Who needs to hear about a snapping turtle? I'm not going to report it. But, so we have, we are underreported in terms of snapping turtles, and proportionately we have more reports on some of the more unusual things, like a wood turtle, because people see it and they, they haven't seen it often, but I, I'm trying to get people to go to this section. I'm trying to lay it all out for you here. Go to the website, go to the menu, add to the atlas, report your sightings, uh, common species that need documentation. And in this case, you know, we plug in the town of Westford. Well, who would have thought? You know, bullfrog. We don't have either a report or a photo. Likelihood? Almost certain. You know, but we need a report. Bullfrog from Westford. How about uh, northern leopard frog? possible, that's really, it can be locally very, very abundant, but there's huge areas. Most of the state doesn't have northern leopard frogs, but I think Western maybe, certain possible. So I'm just trying to show you that, that you can search county, town, common name, you can do searches 
in a variety of ways, and we're going to try to update that annually so that you can always go <coughs> and check and see what we really need information on. Um, we also have a list of those species which we always want to hear about. Even if it's been reported from your town before, it's, a, it's an unusual enough species, spiny softshell, spotted turtle. We know of one healthy population of spotted turtles in this state. One marginal population and a couple individuals. You know, so here's the list of if you find any of these things, please let us know. Let's get some information on these. Let's get a better idea of what their distribution is. How do you classify a species when you find it? Uh, how do I what? How do you, like if I find a turtle, how do you classify it here so you can report it? Just take a picture. You don't have to know where it is. Okay. Send me a picture. If you could, and, and that's one of the, the nice changes that's happened over the last 20 years. Almost everybody is now okay. carrying a camera. And even if you don't know what you're looking at, you just snap a couple shots and send it to me an email. And we'll figure out what you're looking at. And you have some yeah. tips on your website too about There's also, oh here. sure, there's, yeah. there's lists of sources, books that you can use on our website, there's identification information, there's photos, etc. But uh, I'm hack, I would much rather that you report it. There's one a retired gentleman who sends me stuff all the time, takes great pictures, he gets about 50% ID correct, 50% <laughs> wrong. But it doesn't matter, it takes good pictures. <clears throat> You know, if somebody says you something that doesn't make sense, then I'll get back to them and say, hey, we really need a picture here. <laughs> um, so exciting reports that came in through the Citizen Science Network. I mean, this species, the North American racer, we had last had reports in 2008. Real concerned about that species, but we got two, and that may not sound like a lot, but it's a lot better than zero. We got two reports this year of races. And I, I, I showed you this one. Rat snake is, if you're looking at a big five foot black snake in western Vermont, you're probably looking at a rat snake. And if you're looking at a, a five, six foot black snake in southeastern Vermont, then it's likely to be a North American racer. So the, the, their, their distributions don't overlap as far as we can tell. But two reports. One from this woman who photographed it Beautiful record, nice photographic record. She had reported it before, but we were kind of, yeah. You know, she really know what she's looking at? But then she sent me a picture. So now all her previous records are looking all that much more promising for that particular valley. And then this other report, whoops, keep hitting that wrong button. So two Connecticut River Valley reports. And, okay, thanks. Um, one of them uh, from this couple reported it before, but the other one, neatly, is coming from this site where, uh, in cooperation with uh, Fish and Wildlife and also VTrans, we've created dens for this species. We're just waiting for this species to, to show up here. It's a historical site. We've created habitat and, and we've created these dens. And what's cool about these dens, we don't often have access to heavy equipment. But there was a project going on there. They had construction debris, which they had the truck to get rid of. And we saved the money by being able to get rid of construction debris on site. Said, so, come on, guys, you know, let's make these dents. And they were into it. They loved it. You know, the opportunity to make some snake dents. They had not had that opportunity before. Uh, box turtle reports. Box has been an interesting species. Um, because there are certain turtles, particularly terrestrial turtles, which are popular in pet trade. And they outlast the lives of any kid. This, you know, it's going to be an 80 year old turtle. You know, and Johnny had long gone to college, and mom and dad are still taking care of the turtle. And so pet turtles get released in places where it, it, there's no real evidence that there would be a native population. But look at this you see a cluster like this of reports. And, and that makes you wonder you know, maybe, maybe do we have. The remnants of a historic population? Do we have a current population? We consider this species hypothetical because we, we have no evidence of breeding. But um, when we see a cluster, you really wonder about it because Connecticut Valley, you don't have to go more than maybe 15 miles south until you hit the Connecticut River Valley population mass. On the other hand, this one is kind of a tweener. 
this record right here, it's so far north that it does make you think probably somebody released it. And unless you get DNA information on something like that, which you don't often have the money to do, um, we wouldn't know. So that's just a couple fun things I'd like you to know about. And uh, funding, uh, Vermont Monitoring Cooperative, this has been particularly helpful for Vermont Fish and Wildlife, and this private foundation, the uh, Mental Act Foundation, has been helpful. Any questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, I know there are a couple of us in the co-op unit here at UVM that are looking into acoustic monitoring data, and you have some species that produce sounds. I'm sure. if there's an application for reporting. Um, we we acoustic take acoustic detection. records, okay. sure. And, and with the new databases that I use the FileMaker Pro database to store this information, all this information, and you can have containment fields that you can put a recording inside. So you have a nice searchable database with a containment field that has the recording right there. So, yeah, we have lots of recordings in that. Uh, it's actually easier to store a picture, but it's, it's easier to get a recording because now you can put out re remote recorders and just leave them in a good spot. I don't know if that's the type of work you're talking about. I think mostly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, as opposed yeah. to hunting down the animals. Like yeah. Which are... So for the frogs, then you just you go through and listen and, and see what's calling in that area, and you can figure out. And that's also evidence of breeding, which is even better than just <clears throat> presence absence. So that's, yeah, we can take that information. Okay. Love to have it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Have you guys thought Sorry. about using social media for, instead of relying on individuals to actually report, they can mine it through social media where people actually making um, their own uh, site and like, saying we found this or something and they post their own pictures as opposed to, again, designing a system. There's already a system out there for you. You just have to dig deeper and then mine for some gold information. Well, information comes to me through some of those sources, like right. the Vermont <coughs> Atlas of Life, um, that quarterly they forward any reptile and amphibian records to me. I mean, to me, it's easier if people forward information from my own website in the format that's easiest yes. for me and, and fits into the database most nicely. But um, And I also want to make sure that I review every record. And so I don't want to create a direct link from public to my database. Mm -hmm. I no, want but, but I mean you will you be mining for important, for significant um, um, posts on social media, Twitter, Instagram, whatever. That it's beyond the level of just saying uh, here's something and then without vetting, <coughs> you'll be depositing in the database. I'm talking about mining, which is a very complicated. Going out process. and and searching for it. Right, exactly. About. Exactly. Okay. No, I haven't done any of that. I have not. Yeah, well, we but if you want, we should probably talk about You it. can certainly do that. <laughs> yeah. So, have you uh, looked at maybe tracking, uh, you talked about diseases like Ron and Kitchen? Yeah. Are you, are you doing that? No. Um, I, I mainly because um, there's a little bit of extra money involved in that in order to, to send off those specimens and get that work done. I mean, we now have. Um, as a result of recent work from Fish and Wildlife, Mark Scott and others, I mean, we're part of an agreement with some labs, but it doesn't pay for that kind of work. And um, if you're interested in that kind of work, um, there's a real need for it. There's a real need for it. And we're on the lookout for it, but I do not, we as a state, we don't have a lot of good information there. We have a new woman in the state, herpetologist, Val Titus. Green Mountain College is very interested in, it, in reptile and amphibian diseases. <coughs> Hopefully she'll get up and going, but we don't do a lot of that work and we, we, we need to. Yeah, there's a new disease, salamander chytrid, that's uh, of concern that could enter Vermont, U.S. through the pet trade. And we've got to be on the lookout for that and, and the defense, proactive about the defense. One more question? Yeah? So I have an old paper. Um, guide on my desk at work that yep. I use when I'm evaluating wetlands. Yep. And is there a new one? I'm this is 2013. There is? Okay. Yep. And where can I get that? You just get in touch with me. Okay. Yep. And you can get my address on the website or just jandrews at blueberry.edu. Thank you.